So, Sony FX3, a compact cinema camera. Sony made a bold move with its launch, no doubt, blending their professional cinema camera tech with the small, lightweight design of their Alpha series. That was back in early 2021, and FX3 became a hit, especially with solo filmmakers, content creators, and even travel enthusiasts who loved its portability and power. I mean, it had a full-frame 12.1 megapixel sensor, Sony's S-Cinetone Color Science, an impressive low-light performance. But as good as it was, FX3 wasn't perfect. It had a few limitations, like no internal raw recording and no open gate shooting. These were things competitors like Panasonic and Fuji were already offering, so Sony was lagging a bit there. Even so, FX3 found its niche, and now Sony's decided to revisit it. Fast forward to 2025 and we're here, waiting for the Sony FX3 Mark II. And from what we're hearing, it looks like this new version is set to fix a lot of those gaps from the original. So, what's new with FX3 Mark II? The biggest thing people are buzzing about is open gate recording. It was missing inside the FX3, which was available in almost all Panasonic and Fuji cameras. Even models like the Panasonic S1H, S5 Mark II, Fuji XS20, and Panasonic S1R Mark II offer open gate recording. And finally, after years of filmmakers asking for it, Sony is adding open gate in a three to two format. This basically means you'll get full sensor readout, which is great when you're shooting and need flexibility for different aspect ratios later on. You know, it's perfect for those moments when you're creating content that needs to go across different platforms. Shoot once, and later on, you can crop for widescreen or vertical formats without losing quality. Another major update, internal 12-bit raw recording. Now this is big. Original FX3 didn't have this. You needed external recorders to shoot RAW, which could be a bit of a hassle. But with Mark II, you get RAW internally. No more clunky external setups. No more dealing with HDMI. Just pure, uncompressed, high-quality footage straight from the sensor. This is going to give you so much more freedom when it comes to color grading and dynamic range. The footage will be richer, with smoother gradients and deeper colors, all while staying portable. All right, let's break down why these features are such a big deal. First, raw video. It's not like your standard compressed footage. It's clean data straight from the sensor with no processing applied. So you've got way more flexibility when you're editing in post. And with 12-bit depth, you're getting a ton more color information. This means you'll see smoother transitions between colors, and you won't lose detail in the highlights and shadows as easily. And as for open gate recording, it lets you capture full 3 to 2 aspect ratio of the sensor. That's huge if you're planning to crop for different outputs later on. Let's say you're filming a widescreen movie, but you also want to grab vertical or square shots for social media. You can do all that from the same footage without sacrificing quality. It's a big plus for creators who need their content to go far and wide. Now, aside from these big features, FX3 Mark II is expected to hold on to speed and agility we loved from the original. It still borrows a lot from Sony's Alpha series, which means you'll likely see things like real-time autofocus with eye detection. If you've used their Alpha 7S Mark III or Alpha 1, you know how solid Sony's autofocus is. This real-time tracking will be super handy for filmmakers who need to move fast. Whether you're shooting documentaries, weddings, or any situation where you don't have time to plan every shot. But let's be real, no camera's perfect. FX3 Mark II is still a compact camera, so don't expect the same kind of heat management you'd get from bigger models like FX6 or FX9. The original FX3 had a built-in fan, 
which helped. But if you're pushing high resolutions or shooting long takes, you could still run into some thermal limits. Just something to keep in mind. Now, how does FX3 Mark II stack up against the competition? We've got heavy hitters like Panasonic S1H, Fuji X-H2, and even Sony's own FX6. So where does Mark II fit in? Well, it's smaller and more versatile than FX6, which is great for solo shooters or people working in tight spaces. It'll probably undercut S1H in price, though we'll have to wait and see on that. When it comes to image quality though, that open gate recording and internal 12-bit RAW put FX3 Mark II in a league of its own. That said, there are still a few things that could be better. For example, dual CF Express Type-A SD card slots give you flexibility, but CF Express cards are still pretty pricey, and SD cards just don't have same speed. So while it's nice to have options, it's not a perfect solution. And then there's battery life. If Sony doesn't make improvements here, you might find yourself changing batteries more often than you'd like, especially when shooting in 12-bit RAW. Aside from features we have talked till now, we're expecting some of the things that made original FX3 so popular to carry over, like a 12.1 megapixels full-frame sensor. It's great for low-light performance and dynamic range, making it a perfect choice for mixed lighting scenarios. We're also hoping to see Sony's S-Cinetone Color Science again, which gives you that beautiful cinematic look straight out of the camera. It's ideal if you want polished footage without heavy color grading. And let's not forget usability. Original FX3 had a compact cage-free design that solo shooters loved. It lets you attach accessories without needing a bulky rig, which is perfect for run and gun situations. The autofocus system with face tracking and IAF is also likely to stick around, making it easier to keep your subject in focus, even when you're working alone. That said, we can't ignore the possibility that there will be some limitations with FX3 Mark II. One concern is whether Sony will keep the price point competitive. With all these new features, Mark II might end up costing significantly more than the original FX3, which could make it less accessible to indie filmmakers or solo content creators. Another thing to consider is battery life. Original FX3 wasn't known for having the best battery performance, especially when shooting 4K video at high frame rates. We're hoping that Sony addresses this in Mark II, possibly by improving power efficiency or offering better battery options. Finally, while the addition of internal 12-bit RAW is exciting, it will be important to see how this camera handles heat. RAW recording generates a lot of data and heat, and if this one isn't properly cooled, this could lead to overheating during longer shoots. Hopefully, Sony has found a way to manage this, possibly through improved heat dissipation features. All in all, the Sony FX3 Mark II is shaping up to be a highly anticipated upgrade, especially for filmmakers who appreciated the original FX3 but were looking for a little more power and versatility. With the addition of open gate recording and internal 12-bit RAW, it feels like Sony is finally addressing some key requests from professionals. These new features are designed to offer creators even more flexibility deliver improved image quality, and give greater freedom in post-production, all wrapped up in a compact, portable design. Of course, there are still a few things we'll have to keep an eye on, like potential overheating during long shoots or while recording in high-res formats. And of course, the final price tag could raise some eyebrows, especially for those working within a budget. But if you're someone who needs a powerful cinema camera that doesn't weigh you down, the FX3 Mark II is definitely one to consider. For content creators, indie filmmakers, and solo shooters who crave pro-level performance without the bulk, the FX3 Mark II looks like a fantastic option.
We're genuinely excited to see how this camera performs once it's officially released and to explore all the creative possibilities it could unlock. It's definitely one to keep on your radar and we can't wait to see what it brings to the table for all kinds of filmmakers out there. Stay tuned for more updates. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, hit like and be sure to subscribe for more camera reviews and updates. Got any thoughts on FX3 Mark II? Let me know in the comments below.